when I heard it, I was like, I love this song. It's so good. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I am Molly and in this video I'm going to be going over my favorite songs from the year 2021. Overall, I think 2021 was a fantastic year for music. Some great stuff came out this year, but I finally narrowed it down to 20 tracks that I think really sum up 2021 for me personally. They were just the tracks that I either had on loop or just were kind of obsessed with throughout the whole year. And for the purposes of my list, I pretty much gave myself two rules. The song had to be released in 2021, and I only selected one song per artist or band just to kind of give my list more variety. But yeah, Without further ado, let's get on into my top 20 songs of 2021. Coming in at number 20, we have So Long Mother Earth by Chevelle. This track is fantastic. I mean, right off the bat, my, my last song on my list is already an absolute banger. I love this track. The chorus is so perfect and it just brings such intensity. I really like the kind of futuristic sound that this track has, it's just great. At number 19, we have Grind by Gojira. Gojira's newest album was great, and again, this was my favorite track off of it. Grind was just the one I always found myself looking forward to. It's the last track on the album, and it just absolutely delivers on the intensity. The delivery is fantastic from the instrumentals and the vocals alike. It's just a great track and a great closing song to the whole album. At number 18, I have picked Posing in Bondage by Japanese Breakfast. This one is definitely a little bit different than my last two picks. It's a lot more melodic, subtle, but this track is just absolutely gorgeous. It's my favorite off of Jubilee, which is Japanese Breakfast's 2021 album, but it's just a beautiful track. It just puts you in a trance. There's kind of a dreamlike ethereal quality to its tone that is just really, really gorgeous. At number 17, we have Chrysanthemum by One Step Closer. This is a fairly new band for me. I've only recently, like within the last month, been getting into their stuff, but their newest album, This Place You Know, that came out in 2021, has some fantastic tracks on it, and Chrysanthemum was definitely the standout for me. I really like the start of it, how they take that excerpt from the film Call Me By Your Name, and it just gives it kind of this very almost melancholic and melodic start to the track before they just infuse all of the energy and impact on it. And yeah, there's just a very emotional side to this track that I really, really enjoyed. It just really impressed me. At number 16, I have picked Beacons by Foxing. This is yet another band that's fairly new to me, but Beacons, the track off of their newest album, is just so good. It really, really reminds me of Passion Pit at times. It just has that sound to it. Kind of a mashup of some like slight indie rock elements with some electronic sounds too. Just a great fusion of sounds and it was definitely a standout for me. At number 15 we have Don't Get Hurt by Loathe. Now I know Loathe's newest album that came out in 2021 was a little bit underwhelming for a lot of people because of the more atmospheric nature that it took with its sound, but I really got into it and Don't Get Hurt, in my opinion, is an absolutely gorgeous cinematic sounding track. And I just really, really like this track. It was actually a standout for me this year. For number 14, I have picked Bells in Santa Fe by Halsey. <laughs> This track is really fantastic. The production on this one is so well done. And Halsey's newest album, overall, I really enjoyed. I kind of had mixed feelings on a few of the tracks, but Bells in Santa Fe blew me away. This song is so, so good. And it just has this really immense kind of dark sound to it and just a really deep, rich tone. And it just is so, so well crafted. At number 13, I have picked This City Will Kill You by Garbage. This city will kill you. 
this track really kind of has a darker tone to it. It's a little bit more restrained than some of the other tracks on Garbage's newest album. And this track just really caught my ear. There's something kind of dark and eerie about it, but yet it's really melodic at the same time. It's just really beautiful. And for me, it was the standout track on Garbage's most recent album. At number 12, I've picked Atlantic by Sleep Token. <laughs> This track is really incredible. I absolutely love how it starts off so melodic and emotional. And then when the instrumentals come in and bring the intensity later on in the track, it's absolutely incredible. It's such a good song and it's definitely my favorite off of Sleep Token's 2021 album. At number 11, I've picked Bye Bye by Genesis Owusu. <laughs> His whole album just puts a huge smile on my face. It's so entertaining to listen to, but this last track on it, Bye Bye, for me was the standout. It's kind of a melodic, borderline hip-hop-ish track, but there's just like a groove to it that is so addictive. Whenever I listen to it, it just is like the perfect song. I don't know how else to describe it. It's just such a great closing track for his newest album, and I just really, really enjoy listening to it. All right, now we're getting down to the nitty-gritty here. So we're into the top 10 songs of 2021 for me personally. And coming in at number 10, I have picked Loneliness by Birdie. Oh, I've been losing my mind in these sweet dreams. This track is gorgeous. It blows me away every time I listen to it in how melodic and simplistic it is, and yet it carries so much emotion to it as well, and it's just absolutely stunning. I love this track. It's so, so beautiful. At number nine, I have picked Straight Lines by Vola. Their whole album, Witness, that came out this year, I think is fantastic, but the opening track, Straight Lines, there's something about this one that is very compelling. It's definitely my favorite on the whole album. I just really like how melodic and honestly really beautiful the chorus of this track is. It just does such a great job of fusing the intensity of the metal side of Vola with their lead singer's really beautiful melodic voice. They just fuse those two elements really well, and that is highlighted so so nicely on straight lines. It's just a great track. At number eight, I've picked Sun Killer by Spirit Box. This track is crazy. It goes so hard and it just it like makes me excited to listen to it. It's the opening track on Eternal Blue, Spirit Box's album that came out this year. It just has so, so, so much intensity, but then when they restrain that intensity and they bring in the really quiet bridge toward the end before they build it up, and then they just let it all out at the end of this track. I think it's fantastic. The dynamics of sound between quiet and loud and intense and restrained are just fantastic on this track. At number seven, I've picked Fly Again by Turnstile. Turnstile's whole album, Glow On, that came out this year is really good, but Fly Again was the track that just always kind of called my name. I always wanted to go back and listen to that one. And it just has this really kind of carefreeness to its sound. It's really fun to listen to. It does a great job of bringing some intensity to it, but it's kind of like a playful intensity. It's not really in your face. And I just really like that quality about it. At number six, I've picked Dead Loons by Panopticon. <laughs> This track blows my mind every time I listen to it. It is black metal that is done so melodic and beautiful. And the way this track just builds up all of the layering, the instrumentals going on. And I can't believe this is number six on my list because Dead Loons is a fantastic track. There's just five other tracks that were better than it this year, in my opinion. At number five, I have picked How Not to Drown by Churches featuring Robert Smith. <laughs> 
This track was one of the singles that dropped before Screen Violence by Churches came out, and when I heard it, I was just so happy. This is exactly the sound that I really, really like from Churches. They still have all of the great synth pop qualities that they've embraced on previous work, but there's kind of a darker tone, a little bit more of a rock edge to this track that is just amazing. Such a good song. I listened to it countless times throughout 2021, and it's honestly one of my favorite Churches songs off of any of their albums. It's a fantastic track, and that's why it's number five on my list. At number four, I have picked Diana by Chelsea Wolfe. Now this is not off of a Chelsea Wolfe album or anything like that. It was actually one of the songs off of the Dark Knight soundtrack that came out earlier this year. And this was the track off of that soundtrack that just really, really impressed me. When I heard it, I was like, I love this song. It's so good. It has this really dark kind of brooding atmospheric quality to it and Chelsea Wolfe does that so well in general. Her voice just lends this very kind of ghostly witchy sound to a lot of her music and it was just a standout for me. It was a track I kept going back to again and again throughout the year. Coming in at number three, I have picked Feeling Myself by Wolf Alice. Wolf Alice's whole album, Blue Weekend, I thought was amazing, but Feeling Myself was by far the standout. This track is so, so good. It has this very muffled quality to its sound, but then it just kind of gradually ramps up the intensity in a very subtle way. Ellie Rossell's vocals on it too are a standout for me, and it's frankly one of my favorite tracks in Wolf Alice's entire discography off of all of their albums. It's just amazing. At number two, I have picked Morning Song by Holding Absence. This was a very, very difficult decision for me to make because I also absolutely love the track Afterlife on Holding Absence's newest album. So it was a toss up between Morning Song and Afterlife. But Morning Song, the emotional impact that this track has on me is so immense and I just had to pick it for my list this year. The delivery is so great and how they build this track up over its seven minute runtime to that absolutely fantastic emotional impact of an end to this track is so, so well done. It gives me goosebumps. It makes me tear up. It's such a fantastic track and that's why it is so high up on my list for this year. So my number one song of 2021 is Isn't Everyone by Health and Nine Inch Nails. Just stop this track is so good. I am such a big fan of Nine Inch Nails, so that's probably why it ended up being my favorite of the year, but the collaboration between Nine Inch Nails and Health is absolutely perfect. This track just has such a fantastic, dark, kind of industrial sound to it that is very reminiscent of some of Nine Inch Nails' earlier music, which I am all about. I love that sound, and it's got this really just dark, kind of brooding sound to it, but there's that intensity too. It's just fantastic. When it first came out in 2021, I really enjoyed it, but it was like the more I would listen to Isn't Everyone, the more I became obsessed with it. And by the time the end of 2021 came around and I started making this list, it was pretty easy for me to pick this as my favorite song of the year. Like I said, I'm very biased because Nine Inch Nails is definitely one of my favorite bands, and usually anything that they get their hands on, I'm all about. And this track, Isn't Everyone, is no exception. I absolutely love it, and and yeah, that's why it's my favorite song of 2021. So there you have it. That is my completed favorite songs list of 2021. I think this year was fantastic for music. I loved making this list, even though it was quite a struggle because picking 20 songs was very difficult. I had to cut out a lot of tracks that I was a huge fan of, but definitely let me know down in the comments what your top tracks were from 2021. And yeah, as usual, thank you all so much for watching. Stay tuned and I will see you in the next video.